My name is Lee Sublett. I'm the manager of Alumni Affairs. It's so exciting that we're doing this event in partnership with our friends at NEOM. Hussein Shibley, who is the president of the Saudi Alumni Chapter, and I are co-presenting uh, this networking hour where we're going to be having some good conversation with our three presenters. So Hussein, uh, would you like to just say hello to our participants this afternoon? Uh, hello to everyone and good evening and thank you Lee very much for your introduction and really pleased and honored to be part of uh, Cows graduates and be with this excellent group today. I would also express uh, uh, the chapter uh, leaders also uh, uh, happiness and pleasure to have this virtual networking event today. I think uh, Kaos alumni showed continuously how difficult situations like the situation we are passing through globally shows that we can get out of it easily and also cope with it rather than be binded with the situation. Uh, the future definitely always have challenges and we learned a lot of things in addition to our science and literature we learned. We learned also how to deal with uh, difficult situations. Uh, I'm very happy to see the excellent number of uh, participants joining us in this virtual networking. Uh, I'm really eager and keen to hear from my colleagues about uh, their journey, what they expect in the future, uh, and what their advice is to others, um, including myself. And actually, myself would be very happy uh, to learn from others as actually every day I'm discovering one of Kaos alumni here or there, adding uh, an impressive uh, print there in their organization. And this is always comes with surprises, although Kaos uh, graduate list is considerably uh, limited. However, they are making a major impact whether locally or even globally. I don't want to take their time. I'm eager to hear uh, from them and chatting with them uh, this evening. So please, please go ahead. Sure. Uh, and to Hussein's point, just for everybody's reference, uh, just after our spring graduation, we now have a total of 1,997 graduates or alumni. And, uh, and so we look forward to commencement in December where we uh, then get into the 2000s. That will be very exciting. Uh, and as Hussein said, we have a small alumni community, but 1997 alumni all doing impactful work uh, around the world. So, you know, uh, we're very lucky that three of those 1,997 graduates doing impactful things are here uh, this afternoon. And so it's my pleasure to introduce our three alumni who you'll be hearing from. What I'm gonna do is just very briefly introduce our speakers by name and then as we get the conversation flowing you'll hear a little bit more about them and for our panelists sorry for our uh, participants I just want to make sure that you know that this is an interactive session so we will have uh, one presenter speaking one by one and feel free throughout to ask questions to them as they're presenting or just after they've finished, because this is all about you having access to our alumni and what it is they're saying. So today we're joined by three presenters, Ala Ragab, who has just graduated with her PhD. She also has a master's. Uh, and Ala's uh, job title, which we hope to explore a little bit about uh, at NEOM is Resource Recovery and Beneficial reuse specialist. Now, I hope you talk to us, Ala, about an acronym that you've come up for that job title because that's a biggie. We've also got Baba Khan, who graduated with his PhD in 2018, who is an investment manager at NEOM. And uh, our third presenter is Noha Alhati, 
who graduated in uh, 2019 with her PhD and also uh, with her master's in 2013 and uh, has quite a different uh, discipline background than Bava and Allah uh, as Nohar is uh, a computer scientist and her role with NEOM is as technology lead. So I'm going to hand over now to Allah and Hussein. Uh, Hussein is going to be doing the first round of questions with Allah. So Hussein and Allah, over to you. Thank you, Lee. Hi, Allah. How are you doing? <laughs> I think you have to unmute your microphone. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. So, you moved to Tabuk, huh? I may have some connection issues, Understood. so bear with me. If anything happens, I'll go straight to the call. Thank you. So, um, Ayla, you, you just graduated this spring from Kaos with your PhD. I recall when I had my master in Kaos when you were there, and um, you started uh, just uh, working in Neom based in Tabuk, which is an impressive project in an impressive location as a resource recovery and beneficial reuse specialist. Would uh, you tell us more about your job? Okay, I'd be happy to. So uh, I did my, my master's was in bioscience where I was working with molecular um, biology techniques. And then my PhD was in environmental science and engineering, applying those molecular techniques to um, one of the innovations in, um, in wastewater treatment, uh, which was bioelectrochemical systems. And briefly, that was just using microbes and coupling them with electrochemical, almost battery uh, setups um, to help with wastewater treatment and also carbon capture. So, my, my job title here focuses on, again on wastewater. Uh, I'm employed in the wastewater, in the water sector in the wastewater department. And when I say resource recovery, I mean resources recovered from wastewater and beneficial reuse of recycled water. Um, this was the, this paradigm shift of looking at waste as a resource was something that I was working on during my PhD and now in my job title currently, it allows me to extend that um, and particularly looking at innovations that we can apply here at NEO. I hope that Excellent. clarifies it. I, I, I abbreviate it to uh, recovery and reuse specialist. Oh, that's great. I would even suggest sustainability or sustainable specialist would be also serving the purpose. And I can okay. see actually looking at the future jobs and the difficulty of selecting the specialty and looking at the future job like today, sustainability jobs related to industry very heavily rather than what used to be previously. Um, Ala, when you were working in your PhD, did you imagine that you would be working in industry or did you thought you would be continuing in academia? I had no intention of continuing in academia. I can say that much. <laughs> Where did I see myself going afterwards? Uh, to be honest, that was actually one of the biggest struggles that I had um, uh, when I would think about where I would see my career going. Um, and it was the source of a lot of self-doubt because uh, I think I felt that PhD focused, the, the PhD focused me so so much in such a small niche environment um, that I really worried that how can I translate that into um, into industry and would anyone want to hire me afterwards and I can I, I truly did not expect myself to be working with Neom um, at this point uh, but from when I started hearing about it it was really it was definitely one of my goals too and it was I wouldn't say 
I mean, it was definitely something that I would be very excited to work in, but, and I'm, I'm happy that I got the opportunity and, and they, they saw that I, I could fit into the vision um, of Neum and that I can contribute to that. Oh, that's great. So speaking of Neum and similar organizations, I'm sure there are a few others locally and internationally. What would be your takeaways and um, recommendations or insights you would be giving uh, any CAOS graduate or recent graduate for their career future? Specifically towards uh, industry jobs or specifically towards NEOM or? No, similar jobs like NEOM. NEOM or any industry related, you know that students spend a lot of time in academia doing research, doing lab work. Mm -hmm. And when they look to industry, they have different uh, segment of work. So what would you give them as advice? Well, I think one of the main, one of the main things that I learned during my job hunt um, is that you have to, you have to approach, you have to approach it from a, a more broader perspective and you can't pigeonhole yourself. You, um, a lot of the work that we do in terms of the research that we're doing it will be very difficult to find a specific application for that in industry. Um, and of course, it depends on what you are working for during your research and what your goal is in terms of work. Um, but I, I, I think that pigeonholing yourself doesn't allow you to really see and understand the skills that you do learn in PhD, the, the intangible skills that actually are very important. Um, the resiliency that you learn, your ability to um, deal with uncertainty. Um, during our PhD journey, we, we are used to the question of, I don't know. We, we ask that all the time. We, we say that all the time to ourselves, I don't know. But you also learn that I don't know isn't enough. It's not the end of the road. That you have to then ask yourself, okay, well, then how do I figure this out? And I think those kinds of skills, you need to focus on them in, when you're preparing yourself for job hunts and um, for job searches, because that's what you really need to highlight. I mean, they talk a lot about these transferable skills, and I think that was really important for me when I was uh, going through um, my interview phases. With, I, I interviewed with multiple, multiple companies, um, uh, and I think that really, really helped me to highlight I, all the skills that I have gained from my PhD experience. And also, I think that overall PhD, I'm not the same person that I was when I started my PhD um, uh, at the beginning. I won't even say when. Uh, and I think I can definitely see that it's made me more resilient. It's made me um, more accepting to change and more analytical. And uh, yeah, I. It's a little bit of an extended takeaway, but yeah. I, I think you, you did encapsulated an excellent advice to um, CAOS graduates, which is really some of the skills they need to, to take to go to the market. And it's very clear with the current global situation that uh, being uh, resilient and adaptive with the situation is, is a necessity rather than an extra skill. Ala, I enjoyed talking to you. I, I would uh, assume that uh, you share with me that we would like also to hear from the rest of the team or uh, our panelists, also their views, and I leave it to Lee to take it over. Thank you, Ala. Thank you very much. I'll, uh... I, uh, sorry, I'm just in here taking notes because as Hussein said, uh, this is all also always about us learning as well. And despite the fact uh, I'm not a participant, I'm one of the hosts. I thought some of Allah's uh, comments about what she learnt during her PhD were amazing. Uh, resilience, dealing with uncertainty accepting to change and, uh, and those analytical skills. I think certainly resilience uh, is, is top of my list of what many of us have had to uh, learn if we didn't already have 
that skill uh, over the last three months as we've been dealing uh, with a, a COVID-19 world. Uh, it's my turn now. We don't have any questions uh, for Allah at this point, I'm told, uh, but, uh, but we will come back if we do. It's, uh, it's my turn now to talk with Baba Khan, who many of you know uh, because uh, he was somewhat of a, uh, a presence whilst he was at Kaust. Uh, and uh, and that's how the alumni team got to know him. And uh, and so, Baba, you are an investment manager with Neon, but you've had incredible uh, an incredible background academically and professionally, from my perspective, that I feel has led you into your job. And I'll let you speak to that remark. Uh, but just for people's benefit, uh, you are American. Uh, you had completed your PhD here, but you have your undergraduate and, uh, and master's programs from universities in the US. Uh, I remember one of the conversations we had, you told me that you had envisaged that your career was going to take you into a career in dentistry at one point, uh, though you've got a, quite a background in, in biology that I suppose thought uh, you thought was going to take you into that area. But one of the great things that you appeared to do while you were at KAUST was take advantage of KAUST's exceptional and unique uh, innovation ecosystem. And so you have a startup, you're the founder of a startup, and you were very involved in uh, a lot of the activity that the Entrepreneurship Centre uh, has put together. So. I want to talk about that as well. But first of all, I, the job title investment manager sounds really interesting. Tell us what that's all about. Thanks, Leah, for that um, uh, humbling um, introduction. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm a bit older than everybody else. I did spend some time uh, before my PhD working in biotech, and that was sort of the catalyst for what I wanted to do at Kaust, and I guess my eagerness to be involved in the whole innovation space because I wanted to do something with the biology that I'd been picking up uh, over the past uh, five, six years when I was working there. Um, investment manager, I think, is sort of a catch-all phrase. Um, if I think about what I do on a daily basis, it's talk to people, which I enjoy doing a lot. So sourcing deals, um, talking to management teams, and finding out what people are working on cool around the world. Uh, we were doing that by flying around previously, and now we do that over... Um, Teams or Zoom and uh, other ways, so uh, that's super fun. That's part of my day, and then from that, I might uh, in an hour or two after that jump on to um, uh, what we call a data room. And what that is is basically um, the research folder inside of your C drive if you're a PhD student. And uh, inside the data room is a company's financial technology. Um, everything they've filed with regulatory agencies. And so it's their whole life inside of this folder for people to go and examine. And so we do that for companies that we're interested in pursuing further to find out like what's the value of this company? What are the hidden sort of defects in this company or, or um, the risks that we take when we invest in them? And then finally, I think um, a third of the day really is taken uh, working with other people who have very unique backgrounds. Um, being a biologist in investment, uh, investment field isn't common uh, outside of biotech. Uh, so there are specialized firms and boutique firms that do that, but generalists. Um, so in, in our investment fund, we're working with people with finance backgrounds, real estate developers, people who have a broad skill set. And it's all about working in synergy with them. Um, and so one week I'll probably be looking, or one deal we'll be looking at biotech, which is an area of expertise I'm excited about, but then we'll turn around and look at some supply and logistics deals, right? And um, new technology coming up there. So investment manager, I think is sort of a catch all phrase. And it just means that you're gonna be doing three things, which I think are very similar to the re research process, which is you're looking around, talking to people, attending conferences, finding out what's new in the field, Two, you're diving into the data. Um, actually, um, as, as Andrew, I think, uh, yep, one of my colleagues says, 
uh, feeling the data and looking at what's going on there. And then third, you're working with people, not just by yourself, because the first thing I learned in a PhD and grad work was uh, big discoveries don't happen by themselves. They're always in groups, they're always in teams. And as the world sort of moves on and becomes a smaller community, you have the scientists, the computer scientists, with the biologists, with the physicists, uh, with the social scientists, and all of them come together to come up with one project. And in the end, for us, that looks like a deal that we can invest in, um, which will give us a return favorably in the future. Right. So one of the mantras, or probably the mantra for uh, NEOM is it's a space for dreamers and doers. And I love that. I love that. And I think that speaks to many of our cast alumni uh, who uh, dream large, but actually uh, have the technical skills to be able to make things happen. Is that what drew you to working at NEOM? I, Neon was in my radar for a while. Um, as you mentioned, I have a startup. It's in the deep tech space. And what that really means is that it's coming out of the lab. It's going into industry. It takes a long time to do. And it's great for a big company that has years to spend waiting for that to mature. But I needed to do something. And so even today, I was working on that company. And weekly, I give it time. But I needed something to do to keep me busy. And so Neon came as an opportunity to me. Um, I, I like to add, I'm proud of the fact that I'm the first PhD graduate hired by Neom as a full-timer. And um, uh, so that, that's always something I, I enjoy because it gives me a special Kaos Neom relationship. Um, so is it the land trip? Yes, definitely. Because as the CEO says here, Neom will start in 2030. Now that's sort of a concept which a lot of times people are thinking very short term. They're not thinking about um, what's going to happen five years down the line, let alone 10 years down the line. And, and that's, I think, in line with, um, I was watching a, an interview with the Crown Prince today where he said he's thinking the future. He's thinking 10, 20, 30 years down the line. And so if that's the ideology, then Neon fits right in as starting in 2030. And what we see with the people around us and, and Noha and, and Allah will attest to this is they are the best. They are the best people that have been chosen to come here, all believing that they are going to revolutionize the space they work in. And so definitely agree with that mantra that Neom is a land of dreamers because what we're thinking today um, as a dream, is it's, it's actually being planned for as a reality in 2030. So we have to dream a little bit harder, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. in the next few years. Great. And how do you feel that your PhD at KAUST helped you transition to the work that you're doing now? And, and if you could speak a little bit broadly, because we have alumni on this webinar, we've got students, and, and so not everybody might be looking to a job at Neil. But if you could just speak about the skills and I suppose, attitudes you learned as a PhD student here and how has that uh, transition to work with what you learned here helped? Yeah, so I think I'd start off by, by two themes I think are very crucial in the Cal State ecosystem. One is the diversity, it's highlighted every year. And so if you've been, if you've spent a year as even master students do, um, you're going to see a lot of different types of people. So diversity and the two, the eagerness of cows to embrace technology. Um, anybody who's been out of cows for a while knows that the access we have to papers and publications when you're sitting inside the, the network is, is, um, uh, is amazing. And it's, the, it's a digital library. So embracing technology and diversity, I think those two are the pillars um, that cows provide from day one. So what do you do with those things? First thing is you go out and you talk to people and you talk to people that are different than your backgrounds. And so Ada and I are similar in the fact that we are environmentalists and biologists, but I think she has a very different background than me. And she was about two desks behind me. So I could just go back there and, and uh, chill out with Ada whenever um, I felt like 
there was, I needed a break or something. So there's very interesting people sitting within, uh, I won't say two meters, but past two meters of you. Um, that, that definitely, that is a big factor. I think you could put up and, and uh, utilize the Kaus platform for, which is being able to talk to different people who have different skill sets and have come from different places. Um, more directly though, when it comes to the technical skills, uh, unlike Ada, I think like uh, as I was getting closer and closer to the topic that I was studying, I realized that what I was really learning was critical thinking skills. These are skills that I can then go and ask good questions because nobody really cares about how bacteria come together and form communities, which is a very niche topic that does span dentistry and clinical biology but, uh, and desalination, but not many people care about that. So in the end of the PhD, you're really in this narrow hole, but, but re in reality, what you've done is you've, you've learned the skill of asking really good questions. So, so that's number one. Number two, you know how to break down a large problem. Uh, I mean, all of us have written an introduction to a paper as a student, and first thing we talk about is this global problem. And then we keep honing down into this problem that we're working on. But the ability to break down large problems into small ones that are solvable, I think that's another skill that PhDs bring, and they should not undervalue that. Um, and then the third thing I think, um, where KAUS provides a, a, a unique platform is communicating that. Uh, I think over my KAUS PhD, I attended about 12 international conferences. So I was given the ability to go out and uh, present my material. When I was uh, a, a starting off PhD student, I mean, that was to go and listen, uh, find out what's new in the field. And then as I got more senior, it was to go and present, be challenged and learn. And so communicating ideas is special super important because, and that culminates really in the defense, which is you have a five, four year PhD and you have to give it all in 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Well, in, in, when you keep moving on in life, I think everything gets condensed and in the end, everybody wants um, the, the highlights of a deal or the highlights of what you've been working on for the past six months in three bullets, right? So, so that ability to take a, a large chunk of data put it into a form that people understand and then present that clearly, I think is all part of the scientific method, which we learn at Kaus. Uh, any university, but Kaus does it very well because um, it gives you the opportunity to travel and meet and, and interact with a lot of different people. Great. Uh, one final question, uh, Baba. If you could give a, key a piece of key advice to our participants, who might be students, who might be alumni out working already, uh, what would that broad piece of advice be? So two points. Uh, one is coming from a mentor I had, um, Mark Tester, Professor Mark Tester over at Kaus. A lot of the alumni might know him. I think the Kaus community knows him quite well. He, he told me one time, Bobber, the number one skill when you go into a meeting, go into a new environment is ask good questions. And uh, that, that seems very simple, but um, it takes a long time. And I think the PhD hones you to that. So as you develop in, in your graduate work, master's or PhD, just learn to ask good questions. And half of that is, is to listen well. Um, from my, so that, that's actual probably real advice. Uh, the second one is my own. And, and I would say is um, as the world moves on and, and data and knowledge becomes more accessible, at our fingertips, I think the real key will be um, to have really good soft skills. And, and that means that being able to fit into any environment and, and make light of the situation, interact with the people well, because once people know that you care, then they'll care about what you know. And that's a quote from um, Roosevelt, which I think is, is really cool. I heard it the other day, but once people know that you really care about what they're doing, what you're talking about, what they're talking about, then they'll actually care about what you know. And then that's where really you can move the, the meter a little bit further. So as a, a takeaway, be strategic and, and develop soft skills. I think that's key moving forward. Great. Thank you, Bubba. Thank you. I've got a question that's come through from one of our panelists, Mohammed bin Gubair, who asks you uh, 
is there a place where one can explore the investment opportunities in NEOM? The investment opportunities in NEOM, um, if that means like um, joining, uh, forming a business at NEOM, that's a slightly different than what we do, which is we go and invest um, a pot of money into companies that then we want to attract back. Uh, yes, there are, there will be opportunities for people to come to Neom and set up shop. And right now is a great time to engage with the, the relevant sectors. We're working in the area of interest. So it's food. There's a, quite a, a representation of Kaust on the food team. If it's um, technology and digital, I'm sure Noah would love to, uh, to listen to it. Um, and, and if it's water related, whatever. Um, if it's a company you're interested in bringing to Neom, I'm sure we're all ready to listen. Um, but just keep in mind, it has to be innovative because that's the question we're asked by the sectors and by the CEO. Because if it's available today, then he'll ask, why are we doing it? Great, thank you for that. Uh, we've got another question that's come from Abdulaziz Baras, but I think it's more broadly uh, than your area, Baba. So Abdulaziz, if you're listening, uh, we will come back at the end to your question. Uh, thank you, Baba, very much for that. We're about to move on to Noha, but uh, as Bubba has been talking, I've been watching some of the networking that is going on behind the scenes. Uh, a lot of it driven by Andrew Yip. So big shout out to Andrew, who, glad, you're, glad you're there. Uh, Andrew pops up everywhere. The last time we saw him was in Shanghai at an alumni event there in October. Uh, so uh, I also saw a couple of other names, and so thank you, uh, Joe Assisi, for, uh, for signing in from the US. Uh, we've got Ahmed Shibal, who is here from Abu Dhabi, and a number of others who I, I just saw places rather than names. So we've got alumni from all over. So a big welcome to you, and uh, and it's great to to see your name and uh, and your participation. Uh, I'm going to now talk with Noha, Noha Al-Hati, who uh, has just come on screen, uh, and, uh, and look forward to having a conversation with you for the next 10 minutes, Noha, about your role as technology lead with, uh, with Neil. Uh, you finished your PhD last year, and from my reading, the marvelous David Keyes was your supervisor. That's right, Hakan Bakshi and David Keyes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, um, so Noha, you've got a computer science background. Uh, you were recently, you and a colleague were recently awarded with the German Gauss Center for Supercomputing uh, for some original research. Uh, that looks at high performance computing. Uh, and so as a result, this made Kaus to the first Middle Eastern institution to receive this prestigious award. So congratulations on you so that much. incredible, incredible honor. Um, you know, from what I've read about you and your role as technology lead, it seems like you have ended up in your dream job. That's quite true. Uh, let me tell you something, Lee. So, when 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 the Crown Prince announced about this ambitious dream, let me tell you, I didn't sleep that night. <laughs> I kept reading about everything that was written about you, and I put like a goal in my mind that I will end up working in this ambitious project. So I worked up for, for, for that dream and I tried to develop or equip myself with the all needed skills, with their managerial uh, skills, uh, interpersonals. I, I tried to read everything about smart cities, smart technologies. Like I just put that goal in my mind and I worked for it. So eventually it paid off and yes, it is my dream job. Fantastic. So, you know, kind of looking back at where you started your academic journey, you did your undergraduate degree at IFA University, you came to KAUST for your master's and then you went on 
to do your PhD. That was a long time that you've spent learning. And over those years, you were just talking about smart cities and over those years, uh, smart cities and all of these amazing technologies have evolved. Um, what drew you into the studies of computer science? Okay, let me tell you something. I didn't just study for uh, computer science. I started, as, as Barbara said, we feel like old because we spent all our life in academia. I studied uh, business administration in King Abdelaziz, and then I studied information system, uh, bachelor also in, in Abfet University, and then my master's in information system, and my PhD in, in uh, sorry, my master's in computer science, and my PhD in computer science and electrical engineering. So you can see that I've acquired a massive knowledge yeah. from different fields. Yeah. So it, it, moving, moving actually the transition between academia to industry, uh, and I'm not quite sure if that uh, like answers the, the, the question that you asked, but the, the moving from, from academia to industry, I can say that I sealed smoothly because uh, as I told you, uh, I, I have like acquired similar uh, uh, knowledge from different fields. So applying that in, in Neom, it was easy for me. And as I told you, I focus more and develop the interpersonal skills, the managerial skills. So that was, was like making that the transition easy for me. Great. Uh, so what do you do in your job as, uh, as technology lead? What, what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay, so I'm, I'm actually working in two like major projects. Um, I'm the technology lead of tech and digital sectors. So mainly I'm working on the connectivity sites, which is related to the fiber, 5G, uh, wireless, uh, uh, satellite, subsea, so all that is related to all the connectivity aspects, as well as I'm leading on new initiative, uh, uh, initiative on emerging technologies, such as advanced robotics and human machine interfaces. Right. Yes. So, wow. Wow, I'd it's love to hear that. Different. Yeah, so, so you're, you're working with robots or you're working to design them? So we're, we're one of the plans to, of course, manufacture those robotics in future in, in Neon, but we're working now to provide all types of robotics to serve uh, the, the needs of our sectors. As you know, we have 16 sectors. So we're working on providing all of these, whether it's drone, or walking robotics, for construction, for health, for tech and digital, like all aspects we're working on providing these uh, robotics to all sectors. And, and do you work with a number of other colleagues? Do you, do you have a large team of colleagues that you're making all of this happen with? No, so that's why we are here today. We need, we need uh, Calcium to come and help us with this process. <laughs> We're, we're right. quite a, like a small, a small team, but uh, in the plan to, to, to uh, recruit more. Right. So uh, anyone interested in robotics, please contact me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, oh, yes. And, and I'm sure uh, we'll be getting, you'll be getting flooded with, uh, with people who are, who are interested, Noha. Um, did you always have a vision doing your PhD that you were going to work in industry or was working in academia, uh, maybe in a university, part of what you thought about early on? From a long time ago, I knew that I will end up in industry. Taking a PhD, it was a passion. Uh, I, I love the research in high performance computing and I decided to continue and finish my graduate studies. But I knew like, from a long time ago that I will end up whether I'm building my own company or work in, in a, like a mega projects like Neo. Fantastic, That's fantastic. <laughs> um, and if you had a piece of advice for some students who have signed in today, who are really keen on working for Neo, uh, what would your advice to them be? Okay, 
So if you want to work for Neom or any 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 like major or big uh, projects like Neom, uh, I would recommend that you you equip yourself with the right skills because we're, we're focused more here in and in, in on in our research skills. So I would, I would recommend that they join the patient center, all the workshops that KAUST is providing, take advantage of it. Uh, when writing your CV, I would recommend that you, you consider yourself like a recruiter because submitting a CV to uh, like an institution or a fair state would be different than submitting it to an industry. So just, just put it in mind to, to show your skills and how you are able to tackle any problem uh, in, in the CV. Um, last advice, just dare to dream big, accept challenges and embrace the change and enjoy, enjoy the moment. For those who are still uh, studying at KAUST, I, I would recommend them to, to enjoy, to live the experience, uh, not just to stay in the office and work for, no, just that I, I wish I did that during my studies. So I would recommend to, to enjoy more and take advantage of all the, the, the great stuff that that uh, providing to his community. Great, Noha, thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, actually, it might be more broad for the, the three of you. So, so we'll, we'll come and do questions in just a moment. But Noha, thank you for that. I think uh, in terms of your advice to the participants in Dreaming Large, uh, I think you've done that. Uh, for a very, very long time, and I'm glad you ended up uh, in your dream job. Uh, that, that's fantastic. Uh, and, and wishing you all the best. Um, and now uh, that we've got the opportunity for question time with the three of you, and I've got a couple of questions that have come through. So, uh, Baba and, uh, and Allah, um, the, the question that Abdulaziz Baris asks uh, is, is perhaps relevant to the three of you, but Baba, it was specifically directed at you. Uh, and I'm not sure that I fully understand it, but was there a joint transition program that perhaps it's meant to be brought CAUS graduates uh, to NEOM? I I think that's what the question is. So perhaps if I can rephrase, and Abdulaziz, I'm sorry if I'm getting this wrong, but uh, the question is, your job seem to be incredibly aligned to the areas in which you've studied or worked previously. Um, have your jobs been sort of handcrafted to suit you, or is it just a conversation that you had with Neom along the way where these opportunities were becoming available and you matched what was needed at the time. Baba, if you want to respond yeah. to that. Yeah, um, th there was no, at, at the time when I joined, a per se an agreement or um, a partnership between Kaust and Neom uh, to bring in people. So um, when I joined, I was, um, sort of headhunted by a professor who was working at Neom for a secondment at that time. And one of the first conversations I had with him was that I'm not, because I have a family, I'm not just gonna come over to Neom on a temporary contract. And so he said, come over, we'll talk about it. And that's what we did for two months. Um, so I, I joined Neom, I started volunteering in the beginning and um, uh, July 1st, tomorrow is my first day at anniversary at Neom. Um, so the two months that I joined, I was basically coming into the office every day, working, negotiating with HR, um, talking to them about what I'd like to do, what I see myself doing in the future. And once they saw that I was passionate, value, value, uh, creating value, I mean, everything fell in place. Um, I think now there is more of a... Um, an alignment between Kaust and Neom, and um, maybe, maybe I don't know how you guys can talk about that more, but during my time, no, although um, the job itself was created because uh, I sort of fit in and I made myself fit into what I wanted to do. So, 
if I could actually uh, add one thing that's off um, that, which is if you're interested in Neom or any actually opportunity anywhere in the world, one of the best things you can do is begin to network in properly. And networking in properly doesn't mean sending a cold email or a LinkedIn message to somebody, but actually finding out what do they do um, and, and be interested in it because people like to hire people who are interested. And you can always train somebody, uh, but the passion has to be there. And so um, my advice is if you're interested in any company, whether I want to join Amazon tomorrow, I'd, I'd go out and do research and, and do a lot of research into what do I like to do? What are the people that I know in this area do and be interested? And then that usually creates opportunities. And Noha, uh, Ala, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I, I second every word you said. So yeah, that's right. Just, just try to approach the right person, connect with the right one. If there is like a specific role that you're looking for, keep looking at career.neum.com, just check it on a daily or weekly basis. Um, yeah, that's it. If Ala wants to add something else. Great. Uh, I'll add something that um, on that careers website, um, I think I last said no, on that careers website, initially it was very um, senior level positions, but from my understanding now it's opened up and there are more entry level uh, post PhD level positions that are available. So that's a good place to keep checking if you haven't in a while. Great. Allah, were you going to add something? Oh, I was muted. No, I, I just agreed with, with Noham Baba. I think they covered the main points. And, and um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if anybody here attended the, uh, the Neom um, kind of uh, uh, session that they, I think the professional yeah. development office had, had arranged a few weeks yeah. ago, I, I sat in on that. And that's what they, they had mentioned, that um, more jobs are coming, more positions are opening up this, year um neom is growing um and it's just about having that interest that passion making that connection and yeah great thank you and uh i think from what the three of you have just said that answers the question that one of our participants uh ahmed faz has asked about uh career opportunities for uh for CAST alumni and being able to uh, make those connections. So Ahmed, that's something that we're very happy to facilitate with the alumni that we currently have working at NEOM. So if you're interested in us helping you make those connections, just get in touch with the alumni team. We've got quite a few questions that are coming in. So um, we've got one from uh, Eamon Amir. Hello, Eamon. Uh, and I hope it's okay that I'm reading people's names. Um, he asks the question about, uh, this is for you, Noha, uh, is there an R&D centre in NEOM so far, uh, or is there one that will be established? So there, there's, we do have like an education sec uh, center, uh, sector at NEOM, one of the subsector of the education would be research. So that will be, I believe, anyone that interested in postdoc or, or uh, they, they, are, they would be interested in hiring as postdoc and uh, PhD graduates. But I believe the plan would be within the coming two to three years. I'm not quite sure, uh, but that's what I heard from the education sector. Great. Thanks, Noha. Uh, we've got a question from Sohal Fazan Sheikh, I think that question was answered with regards to more broad positions now being available on the NEOM website. Uh, Sohal, if uh, what you're looking for is not on the NEOM website, let us know and we'll put you in touch uh, with the right people. Uh, we've got a question for Nohar again from Mohammed bin Guber. Uh, can you please elaborate more on the current status of the robotics and drones you're working with? 
Um, are you just bringing in the technology or developing in-house? Okay, do we have like an hour? <laughs> 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 okay, no, uh, I actually uh, for the <laughs> training, uh, but we're in contact with major companies that provide those uh, uh, advanced robotics. So we're, we're we're trying to bring within the couple of months uh, the best robotics in the in the field or in the in the market. But one of the future plans uh, we're planning to to have those software developers to work on these robotics as well as manufacturing. I, I hope that answered your question. If there is like any specific, we can discuss this uh, in more details. Great. Thanks, Noha. Allah, we have a question for you from Ahmed Shibel, who uh, is zooming in from Abu Dhabi. Hello, Ahmed. Uh, the question is, what's the status of fundamental biological research on the aquatic environment at NEOM. Actually, it's probably a question for Allah and Baba. Uh, is research uh, that would lead to drug discovery or biotechnological algae uh, used from the waters surrounding NEOM something of interest? Um, well, uh, I think <laughs> Baba should definitely weigh in on this as well. Um, I think this, I think anything related to fundamental research at this point might be a little bit premature. There is a lot of interest in innovative technologies that are at the appropriate technology readiness level because um, we have full scale uh, plans for implementing novel technologies, novel but proven technologies, but we also have plans for innovation hubs that um, involve several of the different sectors, including um, from my end, we, we have the food, water, and energy innovation hub. And uh, we have, his question really hits on, on the interest and the scope of multiple different sectors, including health and bi biotechnology. And I think this is where Bobber's experience also with the company will come in um, more useful to answering that question. I know that there is interest in using algal um, technologies, not necessarily uh, in, a, in a pharmaceutical or drug development um, application at this point. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's very high level strategies with very forward thinking initiatives. Um, and I hope that kind of gives you some insight. Great, thanks, Baba, uh, uh, did you up. want to add? Yeah, just a brief point, I mean, um, Ahmed, I think you would be um, a Neomian uh, of the future because that's a target. Uh, there is a marine research center being planned and as Allah said, within the water energy food uh, team, there is also an innovation hub that's working on um, novel technologies. What can you do with the Red Sea? And uh, biotech weighs up very heavily into that because uh, the Red Sea, as you know, is not as explored as other um, uh, bodies of water. And there might be a lot of um, good stuff coming out of that. Specifically in algae, let me give an example. And, and this also goes to Jumana's question next is how do we look at uh, forward thinking innovative companies while looking at it through a lens of the past and also the lens of making money. Um, when you think about farming fish that we eat, um, that's being done nowadays, right? And, and people can do that in the ocean, they can do that in ponds, they can do that in tanks. And there's, um, uh, a lot of value add there but but one of the biggest issues and the cost drivers for these are is the cost for fish feed and and what are, what do we do uh today is we take um basically a, a tons of fish that we catch outside in the wild and we grind them up and we give them to fish to eat so that we can then eat these fish and if we were to save cost, maybe we can find some ways that we can use algae as a feedstock for these fish or insects as a feedstock. And so we don't have to go out trolling the oceans for, for um, fish to feed other fish. And so that's a very innovative way. It's also um, economically feasible. And it's one of the things that Neom can do um, because of its location and its interest in, um, in aquaculture. So 
to put that together, there's a lot that can be done when it comes to innovation. There's a lot of space for biotech uh, in this process. And um, I, I think these are the kind of people Neo will be looking for, at least that is the population that they're planning around, which are innovative people who are looking to do things um, with the local uh, environment and content. Great. We've only got time for one more question and some of our participants are uh, already making their way uh, because we've gone a little over time. But last question is to you, Baba, and it's from Eamon Amir. Uh, what's your advice to PhD students about developing leadership skills before joining the career uh, industry and that will help overcome the gap between academia and industry. Thanks for that, Amir. Uh, sorry, Eamon. Um, nice seeing you again on this virtual chat. Um, one advice might be to have five other brothers. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> jokes aside, um, I think leadership skills are, are things that you can develop um, by just getting engaged. Um, and, and I think, as, as Noha mentioned, take risks get out of your comfort zone, get out of the, the research and the lab that you do and, and we're all really comfortable with and go do something that, that is outside of what you normally do. Um, for me, that was going diving in the Red Sea when I was at Cal State, learning how to do that. I'm um, not a great swimmer. I don't think I am still, but, but learning to dive and, and going down, um, getting my advanced patty. I mean, these are things that you do. They're small, incremental um, shifts that affect your mind, uh, your mind, and, and it allows you to sort of progress um, just incrementally. And as time goes on, you get braver and, and better and people want to listen to you. Uh, with that said, I think we always, as PhD students, suffer from imposter syndrome when we first entered uh, our PhD programs, when we first entered NEOM, like, oh, all these smart people, what am I doing here? And I think that, and Hussein, I think everybody sort of suffers from that. So. Um, it's just getting over that and being, yeah, we're going to make mistakes. Yeah, things are not going to go well, but we're going to keep moving on. And um, I think that's important that don't underestimate yourself. All of us are leaders. We just have to know how we can unlock our potential. Uh, uh, fantastic. Um, great advice, Baba. Hussein, can I throw to you to start wrapping things up and saying goodbye? Thank you, Lee. Um, it's really enjoyable to hear uh, our panelists and their uh, advices to the rest of uh, the community. And actually, um, I don't have a lot to add because what they, what they did, it's extremely beneficial for me personally, and I'm sure for others. I'm looking forward to hear from the rest, inshallah, very soon. Thank you, Dean. Thank you for our panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Hussein. Baba Noha Allah, thank you very much for your words of wisdom, advice, and your time this afternoon. And to our participants who have Zoomed in from all over the kingdom and all over the world, thank you for your time. And we look forward to bringing uh, the Virtual Alumni Networking Hour to you again in September. Thank you all very much.